Okay. Welcome. Oh, there, we there we go. go. Welcome back to the HEC. We are tied up one to one here in the series, and we're getting ready for game number three. And we're tied up with Plain Ducks and Fnatic, which is a, a pretty crazy thing to say. Fnatic coming out and showing a really cute comp in game number two, but they made a mistake or two, and we saw Chris and crew just go ahead and de deconstruct it. And we are probably going to have a fantastic series here, especially game three, but I have to say that you look really manly without hair. Thank you very much. Twitter is a buzz right now, as you guys are Twitter. being I quite love the goofballs. Speaking of Twitter, our friends here at HEC Europe here and uh, HEC Esports has went ahead and made a nice little video. Our boy Dreadnought talks about wave clear. So if you go to Heroes Esports, you can see a new video teaching you the ins and outs of wave clear and how important it can be for all of your games. Exactly. So check it out. Make sure that you go over to at Heroes Esports. And if you haven't followed them yet, then definitely do that, especially since we have the Western Clash coming up. Now, if you haven't checked out the Twitter account when we're heading into an offline event, then you missed out because yes. those guys are doing a pretty fantastic job on site to just capture the atmosphere with crowd shots, having short interviews there, and just also recapping a lot of the games that are happening. It's pretty useful when we have the regular season, but it gets the main value really at an offline event. So if you haven't seen it at the mid-season brawl, definitely follow the Twitter account right now so that when we are hitting the Western Clash, you're going to get the full coverage and also the atmosphere that is on site. We want you to feel like you're actually there. Now let's go ahead and get ready for game number three here in this Best of Five series. Which battleground are we going to? It's going to be Warhead Junction. That is something that I think is cool and a bit scary for uh, several reasons. I love that the Ducks are actually putting a team to Warhead where they are saying it's a map that usually is banned out. Nobody really plays it all that much. Most of the teams don't really like it. So most of them just ban it away and say like, whatever. And the Ducks have done that in the past against other teams where they have picked Warhead and they basically said, we have a strategy, we practice. Sure. So let's see if you can handle it. That's why I think it's awesome. One thing that scares me a little bit, the one thing that we know about Warhead is it's a big map. It's mm -hmm. a massive map. What's good on a big map? It's globals. What is Fnatic's biggest strength? Playing big maps with globals. So that's why it's a bit scary, but I love that the Ducks are trying something. I, mean, I don't, think it's awesome. Don't forget, too, Fnatic also had a little bit of a, a spree where they were flirting with Warhead Junction. They picked it three times in the last phase of Phase 1 in the last couple of weeks and started to really show off their strength on this battleground. So. Fnatic, they're a team that can play here if they need to. Tazada immediately banned out. Illidan is something that I am watching out for in this draft as well. Not necessarily as a super early ban or immediate first pick, but with a hunt as a pseudo global, he's extremely strong here. But it's really all those global heroes we have to check out now. So, more traditional with the bans, Tazada and uh, the Italian Ninja, the man with the mustache, uh, Genji. Genji. Genji banned out, exactly. It's okay, he's new and he's not played very much. Yeah. Well, no, he's, he's not. We rarely see him. <laughs> Tassadar getting banned out is actually very important for this battleground, simply because of how strong Tracer can be here. There's a lot of room for her to maneuver and also for it's a lot of fights, so I like the ban here for Fnatic. Even though Tracer's becoming a little bit more stable and picked up more often, you do not want to allow that duo to be picked up by your opponents. Now, talking a bit about Genji, just to give you guys a bit of scrim data as well. Of course, we have the HCC here, but overall, when I'm watching the scrims, I'm also looking for the ban patterns and for pick patterns. patterns. Genji is the highest banned hero in all of the scrims, and that's several hundred games played that I've watched and recorded the stats. And uh, Genji alone, as a single hero, on a first ban, has 27. So wow. he is far above anyone else, and of course, if he's not being uh, banned out, then he's usually picked, so it's pretty crazy. He has more than twice the amount of bans than any other hero. Well, played it's well, insane. he's strong. I mean, over in Korea, he's been dominating yeah. as of late. And that's only in the time frame since the mid-season brawl. So uh, not including the scrims that I watched before in different in different scenarios. So after mid-season brawl, I made a cut in my own statistics since, of course, we had quite the meta changes towards the first phase and the second phase. But this just shows you how dominant Genji right now is. Playing Ducks, thinking about what they want to move into. Uh, I actually like Rhaegar a little bit more than Uther on this battleground. Rhaegar able to move and traverse the area a little bit more. You're also able to put yourself in a spot where you can get mercenary camps. The Ducks, though, grab Greymane and they grab that Illidan that you alluded to earlier. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me in the size. He's a fantastic hero on any map, but the bigger the map, the more value you get out of the hunt. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what they're trying to do here. And it's also, you can really play around the bosses as well. If you get the pressure onto the lane and you just hunt over, help out there, you can do so much. And again, Fnatic is of course heading into Globals themselves. They have the Haka already taken. We could still see them play around Brightwing. And on top of that, of course, the Falstad is still available. 
ETC potentially with a stage dive, which kind of exhausts our potential globals, if I'm not mistaken. I guess you could play with a Zagara here in the Knights Network as well, but that's then about it. ETC, False Air, Brightwing. Zagara. Zagara. Yep, those are all the options. Missing one? Alvin Dan, would, would he be considered global with nah. this trait? No, not even, <laughs> not even a little bit. All right, then. We'll see what's uh, going to be picked up here for Fnatic. This is typically where you're going to see that strategy if they decide to go all in on the global life. Do the Tracer. It was the Tracer. Last game was the first game that we ever saw in HTC Europe in Phase 2 where we did not see Uther either banned or picked. First game ever. And Fnatic decided that since they lost, they're going to bring him back. And yeah. here it is. For good reason. I think it's on the last map, they were definitely trying something a little bit new. So uh, they never ran that particular strategy before with Valkyrie and with also D.Va. They maybe dabbled in it a bit, practiced it also in scrims, and it's a good way to actually see what you can do with the draft again in, in an actual league environment. What can you do when everything counts and when you have an opponent that is fighting back hard? So in this case, it was shut down by the Ducks and Fnatic is falling back on the more so true and tried heroes that they are usually playing, more preference picks and uh, more of a normal strategy. Because obviously they don't want to lose too many maps against the playing ducks here, so they have to be very careful. Playing ducks now, looking towards their supports here. What would like they grab? Rhaegar is definitely one of the options, especially with Illidan. You know how good it can be combined with him. Great with Greymane too. Helps you out with any tanks that you might want to move into. Um, let's see, what else is there for possibilities? If they want to get super aggressive and maybe chase down that Tracer, especially past level 16, Karazim can be an option, but you have to be careful of that Uther. Yeah, so I would say that we're probably going to have Eternal on Illidan, and then it's the question how much do they want to play with range damage. They could still, in theory, go for a double support even, which I doubt a bit though. So uh, at this point, I would like to have the tank first. You can pick your support in this rotation and react to whatever Fnatic is doing. I'd pick the tank now since Fnatic is also lacking their main tank. We have also banned out Arthurs. So uh, you go for the tank at this point. But I'm really curious to see if they have maybe something completely crazy. And so far they don't. You go into the global with Brightwing. Big map again, Warhead. Nubarak for engage. But I'm curious to see if maybe on the last pick we're gonna see something completely out of the ordinary. I mean, these heroes that would fall around there is you could play Vikings, for example, and uh, use them. You could try and play uh, still Zagara and go for Nidus Network. If you're talking about Warhead Junction, we see the map so rarely in HTC Europe that there's definitely a lot of picks where you can try and make something happen. They're waiting to see what Fnatic moves into first. Already they have Tracer, Uther, Dehaka. You can run Tracer with a solo support. It's a bit difficult, mm. but doable. I have to say, when we're talking about the Ducks, uh, last pick, Zagara would actually pretty much suck in this setup. Against Dehaka? Yeah, not only that. Dehaka is one, but also Uther. Th there's a lot of heroes that can really clear the tumors quite yeah. easily. Then you have Dehaka, who can give her problems with the uh, global. And as long as Zagara doesn't have creep on the map, she is losing so much value. So Zagara is also played on the... Uh, in China sometimes, but overall, I, I'm just looking for crazy picks that the Ducks could pull off, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to see something a little bit more closer to home and them just trying to play around Illidan with Hunt and Brightwing to jump in and use those globals. And with the globals that we pointed out earlier, Fawcett is now actually taken for Fnatic and ETC. And I guess we can all imagine what kind of old ETC is going to take on Warhead Junction. Death Metal. Definitely. He rocks. With stage dive. He, just, he, 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 he rocks. Yeah, he does, man. There's one thing that has in common with Bon Jovi. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm glad. I, I knew I would get you with this one. I'm glad he's an artist. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, so the fifth pick here. Standard picks. I'm still pulling from my bull Rhaegar. It would be double support. Definitely doable. I've seen a lot with Brightwing. Li Ming. Li Ming could be good. It's going to be the Medev. Yeah, even better. Sometimes it's really, with some teams, Medev is really just completely inscribed on every screen. And then sometimes you look at a draft, Medev is picking, it's like, huh, that's right, he's there too. Well, it's funny because it used to be something that we always did talk about for the playing ducks. Yeah. And they got banned Sport out. Sport Billy. For four weeks straight, I believe. Yep. And uh, so it's kind of uh, been something the playing ducks have not been picking up, but here in game number three, Warhead Junction, why not? Yeah, yep. why not?
So, for Ducks, I actually kind of like what they have here. They have Ilden, who can actually solo bosses on this battleground if he ever wants to get off there. He can split push like crazy. He can hunt in. So, Eternal has a playground in front of him. Let him do Eternal things. While the rest of the composition here can be floating around with the Medivh, be aggressive with their invades, maybe go in for opposing Hellbats and such. On the other side, you have Fnatic, who will have Swimpy on that Tracer, being quite the nuisance with a false that they can fly in at any point. I like both drafts. Now, normally I would say I prefer the draft that the Ducks have. I think they have a lot of tools available. The problem is I've seen what Fnatic does with Hyper Global comps, and yeah. that is just absolutely disgusting. Their coordination is usually insane, but the Ducks have a good draft. Illidan, of course, can put a lot of pressure on to false in particular. But there's this interesting synergy that if, if you're false set and you get hunted, and if you immediately drop the Gust, then all of a sudden Illidan is very, very isolated. But it's a really weird dynamic, because if you have an Illidan with Hunt against Falstead, then Falstead loses out on a lot of what he's trying to do. Falstead is one of the global heroes that wants to be on an offlane soaking alone. And if you are against an Illidan with Hunt, you can't do that, because he is going to kill you. He's going to hunt onto the lane, yep. and he's going to take you down. And if you can escape, then probably it's only because he dropped the Gust. He gets his cooldown reduction, so you trade against a really bad cooldown. Fnatic, on the other hand, will now have to play the false dead with a team, and then they can maybe, or they have to just simply rely on that every single time false dead is attacked, that there's immediately the Haka moving in and also an ETC. So it's this weird dynamic that you all of a sudden have where you don't really get out of the false dead what you want, but you have to uh, use the false dead either as a ganking tool onto the side lanes, or you have to make sure that your team is every time going to be ready when Illidan has a chance of actually hunting you. So it's a little bit of a back and forth that happens there. But overall, drafts are both solid, very heavy Illidan focus for the Ducks, but a lot of globals for a team that is by far the best team in the world when it comes to coordinate global abilities and heroes. And that's what scares me a bit for the Ducks. Well, let's see if the nukes will come in here for both of our teams. It's Warhead Junction, Fnatic taking on the Ducks. Game number three, the series is tight as we have the Ducks going up against Fnatic with Eternal on Illidan. We have Nuborak played by Nanda, Sport Billion Medivh, Raymane played by Chris, and Wolf Joe on Brightwing. On the right side in the red, it is Fnatic. Quatnix playing the Falstad, Breeze on ETC, Wubby on Dahaka, Smexi on Uther, and Schwimpy on Tracer. Schwimpy on the Tracer right now, and. I'm curious. I'm really Fnatic's key thing. Fnatic's trademark is globals. It's how they defeat. How it's how they won the mid-season brawl. They won the mid-season brawl by using their globals against Team Dignitas on the last map on Sky Temple. Now we're on Warhead, massive map where globals of course get an insane amount of value. Breeze is very likely to go into stage dive, but well, before he goes into anything, he goes down because the Ducks are showing up with five heroes up at the top lane, and they might even get Quarknix, and indeed they do. That's how you open the game up with a double kill. Fnatic all of a sudden finds themselves under pressure from the get-go. What got into the Ducks? They have been getting kills in the early game left and right in most of these matchups, and here they catch Fnatic and grab two kills. They're not only two kills, they take down the entire wall. Yeah, and good experience. They have a full half-level lead already in the early game. They're getting toward their lanes. Medivh actually gets to the bottom to Silk too. Playing Ducks, looking pretty Gucci. Fnatic on the other hand, okay. <laughs> immediately gets interrupted there. Quick polymorph on the side of right wing, and therefore the interrupt against the drag. It looked for a second as if Greymane might be in trouble, but that's not happening. So let's talk a little bit about game number two. Game number two was where you could argue that Fnatic maybe underestimated the Ducks a little bit and tried a draft that they definitely practiced and trained, mm -hmm. but that was a bit more of an experiment than other standard drafts are. So they definitely had a very clear goal of what they wanted to do on that map, and they oftentimes were winning the team fights as well. But they gave the Ducks a bit of more wiggle room since they were definitely trying something new here, and the Ducks were able to take this. Now, Fnatic has to be very careful that they are winning on this map, and the Ducks have done a very nice job by picking a map that usually isn't really played all that often. So a lot of teams don't even play the map since they're just simply banning it out. And Fnatic now is starting to fall behind here, and if you think about it from their perspective, if they now lose the second maps to the playing Ducks, they would have to win two in a row with them not allowing themselves to make any mistakes here. So the Ducks are the team that is on paper super strong, but just couldn't deliver over the last few weeks. Yeah. They are. Quartix himself said it. Fnatic said it. They said they are way better than they're standing in HTC right now. And that's what they are showing here today. So even though Fnatic goes into this, as they're 
massive favorite. They definitely have to be careful because if they don't pay attention, take, don't take this series enough, then the Ducks can definitely win this game. Oh, Force of Will coming out last second there. Sport Billy will live. That's the other side of the element, too, that I am a bit worried about. When you come into a series and you've pretty much given all up all hope and you're just going to come out and play your game, sometimes that lack of stress can actually be good for a team. And the plane does come out and got a couple victories. This that's, is such a good point that you make. Yeah, and it's, it's a situation that's been good for the Ducks. But now, suddenly, when you get to Game 3, Game 4, what if that stress starts coming back? You're like, wait a minute, we can face Fnatic. Think about how Fnatic's entire BlizzCon last year went when they were able to get the victory against MVP Black. Fnatic went into the series against MVP Black at BlizzCon saying, we are going to lose this. They went into it and said, of course we're going to try our best, but it's MVP Black. We have no chance of winning that game. So there was no pressure on them. And they were a team that was known, I don't want to really say to choke, to an extent maybe, that was at least stressed and pressured when they played in uh, an offline environment under a high pressure situation in important matches. And against MVP Black, there was no pressure because they already assumed, hey, we did everything that we wanted to do. We already made it into the top four. We're looking great here. We can lose this and they are the favorite. And then all of a sudden, without the pressure, they played the best game at this point of their lives and they just completely demolished their opponent. So it was amazing. And the Ducks are in a similar spot right now. Every week they come in and play against an important opponent. Every week they fall short. At this point, they just accepted their fate and said like, yeah, we're going up against Fnatic with the last in the season. We go up against them. We are going to probably get wrecked here. So there's all of a sudden no pressure. And what did we say about them? It's not the lack of ability, it's a mental block. And right now it isn't there. They get another kill and they take down the fort at the bot lane. The Ducks are completely on a roll. They are completely on a roll. They get a fourth there, they get the nuke spent out by False Air. they get the kill on him as well. They hit seven way before their opponents. They continue to keep moving forward. They're on their way towards level 10. They're nuking the middle lane. They're doing everything right here on Warhead Junction. And Madi's in a spot where he's being a complete nuisance to the opposing team. Schwimpy hasn't had a chance here to even get a kill. Yeah, they have so much trouble to put the pressure on. Breeze. And the Ducks are playing this perfectly. It's four kills against zero. It's a one and a half level lead at this point. And we don't have level 10s yet. Part of me wants the Ducks to beat Fnatic, just because I want to see what the Ducks can be when they are unleashed. What we expected from them. Listening to Chris the other day when we were doing interviews, I felt so deflated for him. He just sounded like they were just ready to give up the match. They knew it was going to be a 3-0. Nah, 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 they get some life here. That was just him being completely German. You think so? Yeah, 100%. This is just them. Well, my American reading was like, I'm so sorry. I hope you're okay, Chris. I wanted to buy him a puppy or something. <laughs> this was just basically him saying, we know we are the complete underdog. We know we're most likely going to lose the match. We are still trying. If we see a chance, we're taking it. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're trying, and when they see the chance and the opportunity, they're going in, they're getting the kills. This is how they won the second map. So it's just them accepting, hey, we are an underdog here. But I can tell you, at this point in voice, they're like, boys, this is not impossible anymore. All of a sudden, we are playing better. Things are just starting to flow, and this is not as difficult as we thought it would be. And look at that. We have our 10s level before Fnatic does. They we should have start a boss chance. right now, by the way. Are they going to start boss? Yes, yeah, they they're do. already Good. on it. The moment they saw four people bottom, that's an automatic boss call with your gray man up there. And they do it. They go up and grab this boss. They start pushing in. They have two nukes available. They could push with this, get a fort, and get damage on that keep. Yeah, Fnatic is doing the boss at the bot lane in the meantime. But it's still a one and a half level lead, and the Ducks, they have their level 10. So we don't see Medivh moving to the bot, but Illidan is already on the fort. And this is the danger of Illidan on any kind of structure. He can just simply tank the, this thing six days to Sunday. He doesn't really care. He just flips from one side to another. He's just incredible with pressure against forts, against keeps, against the core. He can basically uh, just solo a core by himself. And right now, they are just pressuring the, the keep directly. The boss is already moving in. They're using the nukes that they have. They're moving in. They have still Wolfjo with a second nuke that they can utilize here. And they have their level 10, which Fnatic still doesn't have. They're going in for here. They hunt and they realize right away they're not going to get that, though. Get a big flip right over the wall. This nuke will come in and clear out the minions, give 10 to Fnatic. So 10 can fight this. Leyline Seal hitting four people here. And the can nuke. Oh, okay. They get away from it. Wubi is being hit, but still. Uh, so Leyline not having too much of a consequence. That keep might be saved. The like keep it. is still alive, barely, but it's still there. The fight, on the other hand, is not over. Isolation already being used against Greyman as we have Nanda dashing away. Can you at least go for the keep? 
He's trying, but he doesn't get the damage in. And now it's Fnatic's time to at least get a few heroes. And they are starting to chase hard. Quacknix already flying in on the false side. Wooby looking for another drag. Breeze looking for the slide, but Wolf Joe with a blink heal moves out. Nande sacrifice will pay off. A bug's life working out here for Fnatic. If they only uh, get one kill on him playing, Ducks will be able to defend the boss on the bottom side too. Granted, they keep not getting picked up in the top right corner. It's going to be unfortunate. They would love to be able to afford that catapult pressure. However, they do have a chance to have that keep sniped at another point. If they really wanted to, they could put Medivh over there. He could be a nuisance. They could send Illidan up there as well later on when we get to late game uh, split pushing strategies. There's yeah. a lot here for Ducks. Yeah, there's definitely a lot for them, it's since they have opened the map quite heavily. They have the lead in experience. And I want to highlight another thing uh, quite quickly, because this is something that a lot of people uh, tend to forget. Some are definitely looking at this and are saying, well, Fnatic doesn't take this serious. They're, they are qualified, they're 6 and 0, nothing can happen to them, the match doesn't matter. That's not true. All these games count towards BlizzCon, and it's that big goal. Fnatic has been saying that every week, every time we have Quacktix in an interview, every time we see Breeze in an interview, what's the one thing they talk about? They talk about BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. It's the tournament that matters to all these teams by far the most. You want to go to BlizzCon. It's the biggest event of the entire year. And every single match, every single map counts towards that goal. On day one, Quartnix has talked about they have their side on day one. He didn't talk about the Western Clash. On the first day, he started talking about BlizzCon. That's where they want to go. They need to win these games. And right now, it's actually the Ducks that are giving them hell here. Moving in again, aggressive, over and over, as they are aiming for that first keep. And they are definitely going to get this one. They Level 13 keep. is ready, and they grab the keep easily. Grab it, and they're out, too. Tracer's on the bottom side. They still have one more nuke here. Won't be able to get too much with that nuke, but still, a keep is a great help there as they'll have that catapult pressure in the top. They can start working on the bottom side of the map. They're actually getting aggressive here on the right side, moving in. A mosh pit has been called by Breeze, and we're having Nande go in and interrupt it. Yeah, a mosh pit, the interrupt is there. Leyline has also been used. Drag on Illidan as they are starting to push him in. Here comes another nuke, and we see Illidan moving in again. He's been hunting all over the place the entire time. Hunts down to the bot lane for a boss, hunts back in. All the auto attacks and the cooldown reduction, he is of course insane here. But Fnatic, they still are in this game. They're level behind. And it was definitely not the start that they imagined, especially with the four kills against them and the loss of the keep. But they're not out of this. Yep, they still have Mosh Pit here. They still have Divine Storm. They have Mighty Gust. They definitely have their fights here. The Giant Killer coming on line too, helping on that front line to burn down that Anubarak. This is actually kind of funny. We've seen a lot of Quacknix builds with a 13 and 16. He's grabbing the uh, the different talents here. Instead, he actually moves in the Giant Killer. And the one game that I think it would be okay for him not to have the Giant Killer. But regardless, he still picks it up. Yeah, so he has been one of the players that even with the Season Marksman and going into Hammer Gains on level 4, he oftentimes goes into the Ari Gust. But right now, he has actually leaned recently more and more towards Giant Killer just for the order attacks. And I think on such a big map where you're also more or less guaranteed to get a lot of stacks on Season Marksman towards the later stage of the game, it makes a lot of sense to do that. You're right that the heroes are not that hip -hop. Wow. Yeah, okay, so much for that. That was a fanatic execution right there. The Ducks turning up the heat and blowing Wubi apart. The Haka down. The Ducks one and a half levels ahead. They are so far dominating this Why year. can't the Ducks play like this all the time? I have no clue, but I've been asking myself the same thing since we saw them on the first map. They are just destroying right now, working on these Merc Camps. For six more seconds, we won't have a Dahaka. Breeze decides to make a stand here. Drops a knockback. Quackness is here too with the Mighty Gust. They don't have the Moshpit yet. Not yet. Eight more seconds. I really think it's just that they... I honestly believe that this is just the mental issue we've been talking about. You go into a game against Fnatic, you think you're going to lose, there's nothing on the line for you, there's no pressure, you just play your thing, you're just like, guys, come come on, let's do our best here, let's try some stuff, but let's play as best as we can. But you're not in that situation where like, oh my god, what happens if we lose? Oh my god, what happens if we lose to Zealots, to the good guys right now? Then we get crucibled. Fnatic, the game against Fnatic is a game that you expect to lose just because how dominant they were. So the pressure is off, and I think that really unleashes them there. They need to get into their mindset when they play against a team that is a direct competitor. Well, now it's about four nukes. Three of them are here for Fnatic, and the number of nukes they have do allow them to make some plays. Isolation yeah. will be blocked here by the Ice Block, as Wolf Joe is going to go ahead and miss out on it. 
Fnatic has a lot of nukes, and they don't have the level 16 talent, so they are probably going to give this one up. There's a big push at the bot lane happening in the meantime, by the way. So maybe with the Haka, they can try and put some more pressure in, but they have to be careful that they don't end up in a weird fight right now, especially with the Ducks having 16. Breeze with the Mosh Pit, only against one, but the Leyline Seal is out immediately, and here come the Ducks now. But with three nukes on the side of Fnatic, they can take that fight and just rain hell on the opponent. Chris is isolated with Wolfjo on the right side. Breeze goes up for the power slide. A portal from Medivh will be enough. Hunt comes in from Eternal. They drink the Cocoon as well. Nukes being dropped, so playing Ducks have to escape. Yeah, Cocoon against Tracer is always a little bit awkward. You just burst that thing down within seconds. Nice! Cocktail and good jump here. Chris with damage against Wubi and also Shrimpy. Look at the top. Very <laughs> north. is already at the boss, exactly. So, Plain Ducks are fainting like they want to push in here for the fight. They're looking like they want to move in. They don't actually want to get caught, though. Nanda is grabbed by the drag, is able to bro charge out. Medivh did drop the portal before he got silenced, and Illidan continues to work on the boss. <laughs> Sport Billy had the isolation on him when he goes into the Raven form. I've never seen an isolated Raven. Tracer dying also to the cocktail, and guess who is back? Yeah, it's Illidan. And he is kept alive by Medivh. A double kill. The Haka is down. Trace and the Haka both eliminated. The stuns. Smexy about to fall. He's still trying to escape. So is Breeze, but Utha is dead, and now it's only Breeze and Quarknix alive. And ETC and Falstead might not even be enough to stop them because there's still two nukes, Tim. There's still two nukes. They could go for core. There's three now, too. With Medivh in here, they put the two nukes straight onto the core. They grab a Falstead. They blow up Quagnix. And the playing ducks are going straight for the core. Tracer will be up in a couple seconds here. But with an Elden on the core, this isn't looking good with a third nuke as well. Breeze playing is down. Ducks. The ducks. They go for it. And it's game. They take Fnatic down. The Dunks are in a 2-1 lead against Fnatic. Unspeakable. I, I did not expect this today. I thought by now with game number three, we'd be like, all right, good job, Fnatic. You won. Let's do the interview. Yeah. It's time to go home. <laughs> Let's get Kaldor back on his bike so he can bike down the hills and get his evolution or his uh, was it elevation achievements. But no, yeah. the playing does come up today and they're showing up. And Fnatic is now in a spot where they have to ask themselves, okay, guys, what's going on here? Are the Ducks playing that good? Did we not take this serious enough? Mm -hmm. Again, Cursed Hollow, I'm absolutely okay with them trying a bit of a different draft. It's not that they just YOLO a draft and say like, nah, let's roll a dice here. It's something that they practiced. It's something that they at least thought about. They said, hey, we could at least give this a shot. Your practices against an opponent is a little bit weaker just to see if it has potential after you used it in scrims. And... After that, it didn't work out, but now all of a sudden, the Ducks brought them to a big map, and Fnatic is starting to fall a bit apart here. And yes, they are so far undefeated. Of course, they would still be number one, even if they lose this series, but this hurts them yeah. towards BlizzCon a lot. So, And also, it's, of course, a matter of just confidence. You are heading into the Western Clash. You don't want to do that by losing to the one team in the league that has basically been beaten up by everybody else. Yeah, man, and I'm actually very curious to where we're going to gain number four. This is the point where I think Fnatic picks the battleground and we pick up Battlefield of Eternity. It's something that they can go to a map that they're strong on, but that's still a battleground that if they don't play it correctly, playing Ducks could turn around and make it a snowball scenario and take a victory. So could be a risk to go there, but let's go ahead and talk about tweets, man. You guys continue to hit us up on the HEC. We love you for doing so, hitting us up at the Heroes Esports. Here is another tweet from uh, Protosava. Protosava. Uh, Heroes Esports HTC, these ducks aren't playing around, they are playing to win. Yeah, they do. How would you pronounce that name, by the way? Portosiva. Okay, I like mine better. All right, so, so <laughs> far... <laughs> Screw you! Like, what? <laughs> totally baited here. <laughs> How would you pronounce it? All right, you suck, mine's better. <laughs> The Ducks are playing around, though. He speaks the truth, however you say his name. Seriously, they're coming in here, and they're up 2-1. to one. And just think about it for a second. One more victory, and they get a win over Fnatic. And they'll be going up in the standings a little bit here, too. They're trying to fight with Zealots and Team Good Guys. Every victory matters, and a win against Fnatic ain't too shabby on your record. Yeah, that would put them into the seventh spot for now, and ahead of TGG. Because if they lose the series, then uh, TGG would still be on seven, the Ducks on eight. Yep, because yep. of the direct comparison. So getting those two wins alone, the two maps alone, already helps the Ducks, especially against Fnatic. If you get a victory against them, that would be crazy good. Can they do it? 
I think so. The question for me is, is Fnatic able to just simply say, okay, guys, focus, let's do this. Because if Fnatic shows up and plays the same style that they played at the mid-season brawl, that they play against the tough opponents, I don't think there's a chance for the playing Ducks to make that happen. But the Ducks have momentum right now. They're high spirits. They are currently having fun playing this. And a third looks unleashed, yes, by the way. Yes, that too. So... I think the Ducks can definitely pull that off. Fnatic needs to stop them cold now on the fourth map and really break their spirit and their momentum. Because right now, for the Ducks, everything is going well. They don't see any need to change something here. So Fnatic is in more danger now to lose the series than the Ducks, for sure. And let's think about maps here for a second. What are battlegrounds that you don't want to go to to keep the spirit of the Ducks up? I think Towers of Doom is one you don't go to, um, even though Fnatic can pull it off well. The Ducks enjoy playing on that battleground. They've had a couple of losses out of late, but they usually have close games. I don't think at this point you care anymore. Yeah, that's true. I don't think that right now you really have a map with uh, the bands that you mentioned earlier where you are like, well, we are uncomfortable here. Yes, Towers of Doom is a map that the Ducks love to play, but at the same time, Fnatic is strong too. That's true. So every single map that we have from here on out is a map where Fnatic can also, has also practiced a lot and definitely has their own strategy. Warhead is more so, again, an attempt to bring Fnatic to a battleground that they're not that familiar with, which is definitely the case because it's one of the least practiced maps. Most teams don't want to play on it. They either ban it out or they just simply don't pick it. And that's something that the Ducks now abused and where they got an advantage. They had great rotations in the early game. They played perfectly around Illidan. Uh, they got the bosses with them. They got structures. And their aggression against Fnatic was beautiful. So Fnatic needs to use the last one as a uh, wake-up call and to simply say, OK, guys, take a breather, focus, and let's take it from here. Let's make sure that we don't lose this thing. Well, let's see if the Ducks can pluck another victory away from Fnatic. We're going into game number four. It's going to be Towers of Doom. Let's see what he did there. Towers of Doom. Okay, so another Duck special. But this time, it's it's a good map for the Ducks for sure. But as I said before, this is also a map where Fnatic is strong and pretty sure Fnatic expected this map. Yeah, so going into Towers of Doom here. Gonna see if the playing Ducks can finish or at least continue being great here, I guess, and try and get the victory. Uh, heroes that do matter, of course, for bands. Abathur, always one of the first couple of bands here. So you might see Tassadar slip on through instead, just to make sure that he can get through, because if Abathur doesn't get banned out, it's a real threat that we've seen from the playing Ducks. Nande, in particular, he has ran a really solid Abathur. I think Sport Billy has taken him over when he's come into main tank, but still, a good pickup. That little guy. Also make a comeback again. Yeah. So we could see our little stitches and Illidan. Medivh's also great here too. Yep. Sport Billy gets a chance to get it again. Interesting that he hasn't been banned out from Fnatic. And Fnatic might be thinking about that twice as they go into it. There was actually a really impactful play again from Sport Billy. One of the reasons why actually we saw Medivh banned out so often against him. So. What, what are you looking at? I was checking to make sure the players are ready to go. Of course they're ready. They're always ready. They're counting it down. Yeah. Three, 